Welcome to Art Vintage. My name is Jonathan, and today is the episode three in sustainability, uh, also kind of episode one in the vintage clothing series. But basically, today we're looking at the life cycle and the trips and journeys that vintage clothing goes on in its lifetime. Now, I'm going to step off to the side here, and I'm going to put a picture of thingy up here, and then we're going to just kind of follow it through the stages and see where it ends up and kind of help deepen your knowledge of the vintage wholesale industry, the vintage clothing industry, um, because this is really important. Understanding where your clothes comes from is super important when it comes to sustainability and whether you are or in fact are not sustainable. So we have to start at the beginning. We start at the beginning when throwing clothes away. There are really four options when you throw your clothes away. You can either take it to a charity shop, you can take it to a donation bin, you take it to a council uh, dump site where they have a textile container, or you put it in the bin at your household waste. So starting from the top, the charity shop, we know how these work. Nice and simple. You take this off to the charity shop, they take out what they want, um, and then it either gets sold off to the customer or ends up in a rag mill. Now, the important thing to note with the charity shop is they are a business. Their job is to make money for that charity. So if you take a load of stuff from Primark on one piece of Nike, the fair chance is they're gonna take the piece of Nike out and then all the rest of it is gonna get shooed aside. Um, I have spoken to several rag mills who all get their stuff from uh, charity shops. Um, and basically the charity shops get so much stock. Right now as well, especially uh, the more people are concerned about sustainability, the more they're dumping on charity shops. Um, because then a charity shop can do something with it. Uh, especially people who are buying bales, especially Syed bales. They're taking out the, they get 70 sweaters, they're taking out the 20 sweaters they want, and then they're shipping the 50 remaining sweaters off to a charity shop to help. The charity shops, if you take three or four bags, they're gonna open the first bag, have a look what's in it. And majority of the time, if it's just rubbish in there, they're just gonna put all those bags aside, ready for a rag mill to come and collect. So you're not always being sustainable when you do that. And you've got to remember a charity shop's job is to make money. So anything of use, they're probably taking out. The next thing is the donation bins. These are generally rag mill owned. They will have charities on them, but that's generally because the rag mill will donate a percentage of their profits to the charity for the rights to use those graphics. Not always the case, but um, the, a lot of the mills I've spoke to, that is the case. Um, so those clothes there go straight to the rag mill. We'll get to the rag mills in a bit. The next bit is the dump site. Now the dump site is generally council run by local authorities. Um, some local authorities have rag mills in place who will take those textiles on and sort them. Others, however, do go straight to the tip. So unfortunately, if you take the clothes there, there is a fair chance, depending on your local authority, that they will end up going to a tip. Not all of them go to rag mills. And lastly, household waste, there's only one place that's going, and that's to the tip. Uh, they're not going to start sorting through your shit from your kitchen dinner um, along with whatever else you've thrown away. It's just going to the tip uh, or to the landfill, if you don't know what a tip is. <clears throat> so we've kind of covered those four. Uh, the next stage down the line is the rag mill. Now, we'll stick to the UK. In the UK, a majority of the rag mills are unsorted, so they just get the stuff in and it'll basically be very, very loosely sorted. And by unsorted, I mean they're not separating out brands. They're very loosely sorted into basic textiles, whether it be denim, cotton, etc. There's no grading, no uh, branding sorted. It's just X, Y, Z, and they get bailed into huge compressed machines. I'll put some pictures up. Um, and then they're sold all over the world. They'll be sold to Pakistan, Sudan, Poland, Ghana, um, where those nations will then open these bales and then sort them, separating out all that stock. Now, there are one or two rag mills in the UK, um, and we'll get back to them later, who are now separating and sorting the stock. Um, and one of them is actually selling stock direct to consumers, such as yourself, the vintage reseller. Um, but we'll cover those in a bit, but there's literally just the one at the minute. Maybe more in the future, who knows? But right now, for the principle of what we're talking about, all this clothing basically gets packaged up into huge uh, 4,500 kilo bales and then shipped off uh, around the world. 
Now, when it comes to these uh, countries around the world, this is where you kind of run into a bit of a thing. So their job, like the people out there are doing the same as basically what a wholesaler does. They're getting in these bales, they're separating off the stuff that is worth money because that's the, how they make their living. And then the issue is then they don't have a charity shop to take their stuff to. So if you haven't seen the video, um, Dead White Man's Clothing, I'll put a link in the description, but it's basically around Ghana and how they're bringing in all this stuff and it's kind of uh, just clogging up the, the countryside, clogging up the sea, uh, and it's just all waste textiles because they don't have the facilities in that country to handle it. Now, where the fault lies, whether it be the people in the UK sending it abroad um, or uh, the government in those countries not regulating the import of used textiles properly um, and handling that waste, it's a debatable area, and but it's one of these situations where sustainability really comes in. Um, the more we can keep in the UK, the better, which is why the UK rag mill, uh, which we go look at in the next video, is kind of important. But then we've still got to discuss the ethics of what's happening with the remainder of that close. So that's kind of where we are up to the case of the UK rag mill. Now, all these offshore rag mills, uh, whether it's Pakistan, Dubai, um, Poland, they're going in and they're separating off all the brands. So they're separating off the Levi's, the Nike, anything that is worth money. Because at the end of the day, they're buying these unsorted bales from rag mills and they're trying to separate it off to make money. Now, there's two things they do to make this money. They separate off the branded because that is worth money, whether it be vintage military, vintage clothing, branded. They have huge teams of branded um of uh, graders who will go through it all, find all the stuff and separate it off. That will then be bundled back up and sold around the world to vintage wholesalers. So direct from those uh, foreign mills to the vintage wholesalers. So when you see wholesalers bringing in hundreds of like massive bales, these are generally coming in from the rag mills. And those rag mills got their stock from other mills. So the unsorted mills sell the stuff to the sorting mills. The sorting mills then sort that and then sell it to the wholesalers. The other thing they do, uh, which is why they're called rag mills, is they cut up textiles that can be used as cleaning rags up into uh, rags, up to square rags, and they go off to oil companies and um, off to oil rigs, things like that. Areas where they need um, to clean up massive messes and spills. Um, or clean equipment, but the, you can't really wash these things. So they're like a one-use clean rag. Uh, again, put pictures up. There's plenty of places that sell them. Yeah, it's like, what? I think it's 10 kilo. It's like cheap. It's not expensive stuff. It's just cut up rags. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got like basically whatever's left that ends up either in an actual landfill or it ends up just kind of dumped somewhere in the countryside, as we can see with the images from Ghana. It just gets wasted. Um, then from there, it goes to the wholesalers. Your UK wholesalers will then sell it to you. Um, the customer will then buy it from you. And then in a year time, two years time, it'll go back around to the vintage, uh, the, what you call it, it'll go back around to the beginning where you throw it away and it'll end up back in a charity shop. They'll separate it off, so on and so on and so on. Uh, quickly as well on charity shops, they like I said, they are businesses. They are there to make money. Um, they only want stuff that is profitable. Um, British Heart Foundation, RSPCA, Bernardo's all have sorting centers where they grade their own stock. Not grade to the same level as a wholesaler would grade it, a vintage wholesaler that is, but they basically separate the stuff off, off that is worth money because they need that money to drive, uh, drive their revenue for their charity. So hopefully this is kind of give you a decent idea of the cycle of life. Um, and when it comes back to these clothing being reworked, for example, um, and using these Primark ones, things like the Primark sweaters, um, if it wasn't for the rework, they're not being used, but it's a case of how ethically they are being used. So like I say, a lot of gray areas, a lot of gray areas with this. Um, are you helping? Probably a little bit. In the grand scheme of things though, even if you didn't pick it up, it wouldn't have gone to a landfill. It would have got to a wholesale, it would have been picked out, it would have been sold off, and it would be back in that system. So anything that you think is of value, you're not actually saving from a landfill. I just want to make this clear. If it's of value, you're not saving it.
because it had ended up at a sorting center somewhere where it would have been pulled out by someone else and ended up back in the system, back to a wholesaler. Very rare does stuff that is worth money go out. And all the stuff that is going out that ended up in a landfill is stuff that is unsorted from these unsorting rag mills. Um, and most of the times they're coming from charity shops that haven't sorted it either. So you, you, again, it's just, it, it's such a gray area. But for sustainability, buy from the charity shops if you can, because that way you're taking it out of that system uh, and you're basically removing it from the whole system and bringing it straight to um, the end user. Um, and regarding uh, the UK rag mill, uh, Boom Vintage Wholesale, Boom Wholesale, uh, that is a rag mill uh, company and they're actually one of the few that actually sort in the UK, maybe the last one that sorts in the UK. Um, and they're selling basically UK rag stock direct uh, to us basically so we can go on their website buy the stock and that stock has basically come uh, from the UK mill uh, in the next video we're actually taking a tour of the facility and basically showing you the physical ins and outs of how they operate their rag mill um, and I've been to a couple of rag mills I can tell you this is very similar to how the rest of them run as well uh, they've just gone that extra step to sort out branded and funky stuff that people may want to buy um, because they're trying to make a, an impact on sustainability where they can. So there you go. Hopefully this has been helpful. This is a big, long cycle of stuff. Lots of uh, information. If you do have any questions, hit the like button, uh, comment below, consider joining, as I think I've already said. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, my name is Jonathan. Have a good one.